Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to show you how to use the polygon fill tool in Substance Painter. It's a neat way of selecting polygons or selecting areas of your mesh that don't have an ID map or that you can't otherwise select. And this was inspired by a little conversation I've just had with one of my supporters, Rurus. Hello, Rurus. Thank you for your support. Appreciate that. Rurus had an outfit in which there was some part onto which he wanted to put a material, but he didn't have an ID map for. So this is a garment here that I've worked with yesterday, and I thought that would be the perfect demonstration piece. It has... Uh, no material zones. I've taken this out without any materials here, so I only have one tile. And on the ID map, I have several zones that I have used with a color selection inside the mask to pick these particular materials here. So I have two cloths and one kind of metallic button material. And let's say one of these buttons I'd like to grab out and it should have a different color. How do I do that? And that's where the polygon fill tool can come in handy. So first of all, I'm gonna make myself another material layer. Perhaps I'll use, I don't know, something like pure copper. I'll just go and drag that onto here. So now the whole garment looks like it has that and that's really not what I want but it creates a fill layer perhaps I'm going to go and change the color so that we make it a bit more noticeable maybe something I think oh, blue there we go it's like a blue metallic button one of these will be will become so um, first I'll go and put a black mask onto my fill layer so now none of that is showing and now comes kind of the tricky bit how do i select one of these buttons and that's where this fantastic polygon fill tool comes in you can find that here on the left hand side when you click it you'll see that the whole garment appears with a wireframe overlay by default that can look a little bit uh, strong in my opinion so you can go over here to the right hand side the, i think the top button here that will go and show you the viewport settings. There's three sections here. The third one of which, the viewport settings, that's at the bottom here where you can change the either the wireframe overlay color or the wireframe opacity. I think by default it's something like this and that's a little bit crazy because I can't see my materials anymore. So I've dropped that down a little bit. Feel free to do that. This tick box here means it'll show all the time, not just when a particular tool is selected. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna just leave that on 10 here. So there are these options at the top left of the tool. The first one is the triangle fill tool with which you can left click and drag on your mesh and then you can see that you can fill in parts of it that will now take on that material. So anything that you drag out here, sadly it's only a rectangle selection. They don't have other types of selections that would be quite nice, but uh, yes, anything that you fill uh, across material zones will just be filled in with that new material and it works on the mask so you have to be on the mask you can't be on the material you have to be on the mask for this tool to be selectable and it works just like the other masking tools if you if you click x then you switch the color over to basically paint that over with black and that means none of that's showing anymore x will switch that back to white Second option here is the polygon fill tool. So triangles versus polygons. In practice, it'll work pretty much the same way. Control Z will undo that. The next two tools here, they're the more interesting ones. This one is the mesh fill tool, and this one is the UV chunk fill tool. So in my case, if I wanted a part of my mesh to be filled out or selected by this mask, I can just go and click it, and then that'll happen. So that's kind of neat. So let's say I'll do that on here. That's another full mesh and everything will be selected and clad in that new material here. So for my buttons, I can just go control Z to undo that. So for my buttons, that means I can just go and click the buttons that I want to appear in that different color and then that'll, that'll totally work. So this is now essentially created me a mask here. If I switch that over at the top here to mask, then I can see um, what's happened here really so everything that's black that isn't on this layer and these two things are white those will be selected so click those and then you know that'll that's the thing that's being added to the mask that's kind of a cool way of working I'll go and undo that here. UV chunk fill tool is has on my buttons has exactly the same effect. So I can click those and then that'll be filled in. But it's more useful if you have things like what Rubus was asking about, like uh, when when I used the 
the jumper part here with mesh fill the whole thing will be filled in but if i use the uv chunk fill then i can basically fill in the individual uv islands here that uh, is nice if you wanted to you know accessorize a jumper like in my case maybe i wanted these two parts to have a different material but perhaps i didn't have an id map for that or any other means of selecting it and uh, if you know your uvs then that is a really nice way of making use of that and then once again x to undo that if you wanted to uh, change your mind maybe select a different button and maybe this one and the one at the bottom those are all blue now and then if you change back to your regular painting tool you can see this without the wireframe overlay and that is how you do that um very handy tool i thought was quite helpful and i hope this is exactly what you're looking for Rubus. thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your support for your likes for your comments i really appreciate them my friends i hope i will see you in the next episode take care bye bye <laughs>